Hello everyone and welcome to another Home Inspector MD video. Well today we're going to talk about arc fault breakers and we're going to focus on what causes an arc fault breaker to trip and the built-in quote hidden unquote diagnostic feature that these breakers have that can help you troubleshoot electrical wiring issues. But before we get into that, what is an arc fault breaker since these breakers themselves physically look a lot like ground fault breakers? They even share a similar electrical connection in the panel. Well, think of it this way. Arc fault breakers are fire prevention breakers, while ground fault breakers are people protection breakers. So even though they look similar, they serve two different purposes in the electrical panel. First, let us take a close look at the arc fault breaker. So this is a Squaregate QO branded arc fault breaker. Unfortunately, they don't really have this beautiful clear case. I wish all breakers were clear because this actually looks pretty cool. This is a special demo version so you can see the inside operation of the breaker. You also see Squaregate's Visitrip indicator, which when you look at it is just a piece of metal that moves over and open in the breaker to show that it's been tripped. Quite simple. Basically, what you see here is the guts of a regular circuit breaker with the arc fault detection added on. This is a plugged on version, so this connection replaces the old pigtail. That leaves the two terminals for hot and neutral to be connected. Here, you can see a wire connecting the neutral wire back to the breaker to what will be the neutral bar. You see that it's in the on position here. And here's the connection of the switching mechanism attached to the clip, then to the bus bar. If we fake check the breaker, you can now see that it's in the middle position Notice how the Visitrip indicator is now moved to the visible window in the breaker. Here, we now see how it's disconnected power from the breaker to the panel. We can now turn it in the off position and then back on to reset the breaker. We're not going to go into detailed analysis on the internals of the arc fault breaker, but I'll show you a simple diagram of an arc fault beside it here. Let's move on to a very quick history of the arc fault breakers in Canada. Arc fault breakers were first introduced in Canada in 2002, and that was when it was only required for new bedrooms. The next biggest change came in 2015, when they made improvements and expanded its use in the house. It expanded to almost all parts of the house. This new arc fault breaker was renamed to combination arc fault breaker. A combination arc fault breaker is not an arc and people protection ground fault breaker in one. See, this was confusing at the time because they did introduce such a breaker, but it was called a dual function breaker. So what is the difference between the 2002 and 2015 arc fault breaker in Canada? Well, the main difference is that the 2002 arc fault breaker did not protect the entire circuit with no series protection beyond the outlet. Whereas the 2015 combination arc fault breaker protected parallel and series arcs for the entire circuit, including branch cords connected to outlets. For reference, Series arcs in a wire are the result of a broken wire, so you have a small gap that can lead to an arc. In parallel arcs, you have an arc in between the hot and neutral to ground. So, how do you tell them apart and know what you have in your panel? Well, if you have a Square D branded breaker, either QO or home line, the combination type has a white test button. In the 2002 version, it would have been a green test button. A dual function square D breaker would have a purple test button. The 2002 Yeaton branded arc fault breaker had a yellow test button, while their combination arc fault breaker should have a green label. The Siemens 2002 
arc fault breaker had a green button, while its combination breaker will have a blue button. Remember, there is no new Federal Pioneer combination arc fault breaker, only the 2002 version because Schneider Electric discontinued making the panels before 2015. So there is no proper Federal Pioneer combination arc fault breaker to meet the updated electrical code. If you have this brand in your house and you want to expand your circuits, you can buy an arc fault receptacle. When arc fault breakers were first introduced in North America, they were designed to prevent electrical fires. But what makes an arc fault breaker trip? Well, like we said earlier, it performs the same function as a standard breaker with overcurrent and short circuit protection. A higher than intended electrical current flow in the wire can lead to overheating of the wire. And if the circuit takes an untended path, that can result in a higher amount of current flow in the circuit. Next, a ground fault. An AFCI can shift from a ground fault. Now, this is not the same thing as a ground fault breaker or a GFCI receptacle. A standard GFCI found in the bathroom or kitchen would trip at a round five to six milliamp difference. This is good enough for people protection. An AFCI will detect a ground fault of 30 milliamps or greater, much higher than people protection. It will also trip on an unintended neutral grounding. An AFCI will trip when the neutral conductor of a circuit touches a grounded metal, such as a grounded outlet box. And then we have anomalies. These include voltage surges like lightning or line and voltage or current fluctuations. There were many complaints about AFCIs in terms of nuisance tripping. Devices used in a house with motors are a common problem for nuisance tripping. The stance from the manufacturers is that the breakers are within the standard for noise. But we all know in practical use, when you have older or used equipment, they can create a greater noise than the breaker can accept and trip the breaker. In my own experience, all it took for an RFO breaker to trip for me was running a miter saw from a bedroom outlet. There could be improper installation of the arc fault breaker. Proper AFCI wiring is fairly simple. For these pigtail style breakers, the white pigtail is connected to the neutral bar. There are two terminals in the breaker, one for the power and the other for the neutral wire. Of course, updated arc fault breakers are even easier because the pigtail has been eliminated in favor of a plug-in neutral style connection. This is where you make the connection automatically when you plug in the breaker into the panel. A shared neutral. If an arc fault breaker is connected to a shared neutral, then the single pole AFCI will not work properly. Now, what is a shared neutral? Well, if you have two circuits, but instead of running two neutral wires coming back to the panel, they install a single home run neutral wire coming back to the panel. Then the result is one neutral wire being shared by two circuits. Then this setup will not work with arc fault breakers. But one possible solution is to use a double pole arc fault breaker in its place. And finally, we have dangerous arcan. Arcan is a luminous discharge of electricity resulting in extremely high temperatures. These excessive temperatures can ignite materials around the wire, causing a fire. Arcan can be the result of punctured cables from a staple, screws pierced in a wire, damaged wires or extension cords. Extension cords are particularly vulnerable by their careless use, such as walking over them. Arcan from loose connections is also a common problem. With all that in mind, what can an arc fault breaker tell you? Well, first, you do have the standard test button in front of the breaker. With the breaker installed, pushing the test button creates a signal within the breaker that has the same characteristics of an arc. So if it trips, it indicates it's working. So when an arc fault breaker does trip, how do you narrow down the possible cause? Well, the Square D2O and Homelike branded arc fault breakers have a feature called a time saver diagnostic feature. This feature is only available in the updated 2015 versions and beyond, not the 2002 breaker. 
since we outlined the long list of possible causes that can trip an upfall breaker, this feature will narrow down that list just a little bit so it can save you some time. For SquareD QO and home line breakers, here is the process of performing the diagnostic test. One, turn off the breaker. Two, hold down the push to test button. Three, turn the breaker back to the on position. And finally, four, wait for the breaker to trip. This next part tells you why it tripped. To help you, please refer to this chart. If the breaker trips instantly, we can narrow down the problem to a fault to ground issue, such as a shared neutral or grounded neutral or a ground fault. If it trips at two seconds, then it's an actual arc fault problem, either a series or parallel. Finally, if it trips at five seconds, then it's an overload or short circuit problem. Basically, why a regular breaker trips. As an arc fault feature, it does narrow down the cause and determine the source of the trip. This can save a lot of time in troubleshooting. It's also quick and does not require any tools. Also, it answers the question if the problem was even an arc fault in the first place. On the negative side, some can always say it does not pinpoint the exact problem or where the problem is. Also, the breakers themselves have no indication at all that it even has the self-diagnostic feature or even some sort of LED showing its function. So what if you have a Siemens arc fault breaker? Well, they do have their own diagnostics feature using an LED for showing the different results. That does make it much easier for the user compared to the Square D and Home Line breakers. But as you can see from the chart, it's more simple. The LED is either off or on, representing just an overcurrent or an arc fault condition. Finally, what about Eaton circuit breakers? The most common Eaton breakers in Canada are the BR type breaker, and they have their version of the diagnostic trip codes. They also use an LED to indicate the problem, but they use a blink pattern instead. Eaton does it a little different in that the number of blinks indicate the problem according to this chart here. So for example, if you see two blinks repeated, it means that the problem is a parallel arc. So with a great percentage of a panel consistent of arc fault breakers today, you will experience more arc fault breakers tripping, but now you have an easier start in troubleshooting the problem. I would also recommend for easy reference that if you have arc fault breakers in your panel, that you print and post either one of these diagnostic trip charts for whatever brand of panel you have. Thank you for watching our video on how to use the built-in diagnostic features on arc fault breakers. If you like this video, subscribe and give us a thumbs up and think about us in your next home inspection. Hey, looking for other videos like this? Check out these other videos. Cheers.